In this video today, I'm going to show you how to install crown molding. Yeah, with an LED light, but that's cool. But the coolest thing about this is it doesn't matter where you live. If you're in a condo with concrete walls, or if you're in a home with masonry block, or if you're in a wood framed house, I've got a system here for installing this that works every single time. And it's not that difficult. So cheers, let's jump into it. I didn't say very much English there. So cheers, let's jump into it. The basics of crown molding installation is really how to operate the saw so you can cut your material. I'm gonna show you a couple of really good tips today to help make the process faster. And also, we're gonna show you how to install a wood backer along your wall before your crown. So you can install the crown to the wood that you install. That way, with that information, you eliminate the worry about, well, if you have a block wall or concrete walls like in a condominium, you can actually use Tapcon screws and attach this wood first and then install your crown right over top and nail into the wood that we're gonna install. It's a great hack. It also allows you to install it off the top of the ceiling and still get perfect installation so you can add LED lighting, which is a fabulous way in what we're gonna to do today. Now, generally speaking, you have to decide if you want the detail at the bottom, which is normal, or at the top, which is abnormal. But you can be abnormal if you wanna be. <laughs> this is how we do it. But when you put it on your saw, you have to invert it. Okay, in order to use a chop saw to cut crown, you wanna cut it upside down. So, what we wanna do here is establish where there are 45 degree angle is. Where is the perfect place to be cutting so that all of our joints are perfect every time. So we're gonna set it up here, what appears to be flat. I'm gonna measure off the fence, it's three and three quarters. Here is three and three quarters. That is awesome, perfect spot. I'm gonna grab my tape. I'm gonna measure right onto the tape. You'll get a much better mark here than you will on the, the table itself. Okay, now I'm gonna put my material here. I'm gonna line that up. All right, good. Now it'll be a lot easier to set that up as we go. So before we can start taking our measurements, and in the tutorial today, I'm just gonna do an inside corner and outside corner, show you all of those tips and tricks, some LED strips. I'm not actually installing crown in a whole room. This is just a quick tutorial to show you all the process. First thing we need is two jigs, okay? We want an inside corner jig and an outside corner jig because that will make life a lot easier. Remember, we're working with a fence here and a machine that's square and got right angles your wall and ceiling won't. So you're gonna to wanna to have a jig so that you can finesse things when you get up on a ladder. I only need one of these full length suckers. Let's cut it in half. Okay. Here we go. So, the first jig we're gonna make is for outside corners. So we're gonna set our material here, realizing that's the bottom and that's the top. We're gonna set to 45 degrees. Get our material on our pencil line. And we're gonna cut an outside corner. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. There we go, that's our outside corner jig. You'll see why this is important in a minute. Okay, and then we're gonna cut an inside corner jig Here we go. That's our inside corner jig. Now that we have these, let's go install our backing. So the secret to doing crown molding on a chop saw is um, remembering everything's upside down. So the reason I wrote down my number and then the, the kind of angle that I'm cutting is because when I come over to the saw, okay, my trim is upside down. So now I take this upside down and the 48 that I'm cutting now I know what my corners look like. So I'm just gonna cheat and put a little pencil line on it. All right, so I don't get confused because it does not take much to get confused, especially when I live in a world like mine where the phone rings and the wife calls out and the dog barks and the doorbell rings. You're halfway through setting up your cut, something happens and then bam, surprise. All right, so here we are. We're setting this up on the line that we've established, okay. And that's just to remember the angle. So don't worry about it. And then we're gonna cut. Now that one's done. And according to my 
calculations, we have to do a 48 cut. Here we are. And this one was straight. That's about as easy as it gets. Ooh, damage the tip. Ooh. Almost a teachable moment. Um, MDF. Put out the legs so it doesn't fall on the ground. That would have been handy. Um, if you're doing a lot of pieces and you're going to work a saw, you can write that in, or you can even on your map, you can mark them, cut number one, two, three, four, five, and work around the room. Okay? Do your cuts and set them aside. Now we're upside down. Next cut is 26 and a quarter. And we're going to make both cuts like this. Good. So in this situation, we want to start on the left, and then we want to measure to 26 and a quarter, make a mark and cut it. This is easy. Let's set this edge to the pencil line. Bring it over to where it'll cut. Measure 26 and a quarter. And you want to measure right to the back of the material and then make a 45 mark as an eyeball, okay? And here's why. This is measure once, cut twice. This is my system, especially for DIYers. Until you get to know your tool really well, or unless you buy one that has a laser, you don't exactly know where that's gonna cut. So come down with your saw blade, make a mark on your material, and then slide it over relatively the same amount. And then when you're just a little bit shy, do a first cut. And what that'll show you is where it cuts on the back relative to where the material is. Now I only have to move over an eighth of an inch. That's hardly anything. There we go. That's perfect. And the third cut is four and seven eighths. Okay, we're gonna go upside down. Now, in this case, it's a little trickier because the long part on this one is gonna be at the bottom of the saw because it's two outside corners, okay? So what we're gonna do is when we turn this upside down, I've got a cut here and I got a cut here. It's always easier to finish with the cut on the right than it is a cut on the left. So we'll start just by cutting material at random on the line. We'll get this angle first. The base of this there's four and seven eighths with outside cuts. So now I've got to put a mark here, four and seven eighths. And sometimes the best way to confirm it is just start with the tape measure at the mark and see if it says six and seven eighths. In this case, I'm just a little bit long, okay? Measuring from nowhere to nowhere with this tape measure is tough because the end moves in and out for when you're measuring from inside something or measuring on something. So in this situation, you're better off to round up to another whole number that's easy to put on the pencil and then just add two to your measurement. Now here we are, put our material on the pencil lines, test cut. Let's get it closer. That ought to be perfect. Now, here's the best part. And this is why I have these, okay? Because I can use my test pieces when I put something up on the wall and I can put them together, all right? And if everything is perfect, they'll, it'll be a seamless joint. But if I've got something up on the, too high up on the wall and it rolls open or, or it'll open up like this, okay? If I'm on the, on the wall wrong, so these little jigs keep everything perfectly square. So I don't install it on the wall until it looks like it's one piece of material. All right, so let's take the jigs, let's take our material, let's hook up our air compressor. We're gonna need brad nails, two inch for this, I'm using an 18 gauge nailer. And then all we need is a caulking gun with the crown molding caulking in it, not regular latex or all purpose or door and window or painters. Get the right stuff, it has a bit of an expansion contraction material. Very important near a ceiling because during different times of the year, the ceiling can get really warm or really cold and you don't want your material cracking over time. Oh, of course, 
There we go. <laughs> okay, now we got our backer material. Let's go install some crown. So just to, for clarification, I'm using a um, MDF crown molding from Home Depot. It's five and a quarter inch wide. And this is cut one and a half by one and a half. You can buy these off the shelf as a two by two. I didn't have them, so I just ripped it off a two by four. And traditionally, I would put it up here. All right, and that leaves enough room for the molding to pass along. And then I would just nail right through the middle into this wood. So even if the drywall is attached to masonry or concrete in an apartment building, it doesn't matter where you live, you can attach this with Tapcon screws or wood screws if you have wood. And you can put it up here for traditional installation up to the ceiling. What we're gonna do is not so traditional, okay? I'm gonna measure three and a half inches down. All right. And I'm gonna grab a stud finder, find out where my wood is, and I'm just gonna screw that in right at this height. Okay, and then what's gonna happen is my crown will then sit something like this, and we'll have a gap around the top so that we can put our LED rope light. Nice and simple, and it's a great way to dress up any ceiling in any room. All right, there we go. We got one here, good. Really, I don't believe you. Yeah, when in doubt, <laughs> try again. <laughs> Here we go, folks. If you wanna learn how to use a stud finder, I use a $20 version. We did a short video, it's up on our YouTube channel. You can just search that out with the use the search icon tool on the homepage. All right, here we go. Oh, loving it. Okay, there we go. We'll put up a couple more pieces and then we're gonna measure for our crown. Okay, let's take some measurements. Now, because we're cutting upside down, we have the advantage, we need one measurement. This to the outside corner of the wall. Okay, which is 26 and a quarter. And I'm gonna write that on here, 26 and a quarter. What I do is I go like this. The right side is gonna be at that angle. The left side is gonna be that angle. That's how I do my templating. For instance, the next one, well, for the purpose of the video, we'll go four feet, okay? So I'll go 48. And that one is gonna be an inside corner. And we'll go straight. And over here, it is exactly four and seven eighths. This is an outside corner and an outside corner. So that's all I do, this is my template system. You put your number and you write the angle of the cut. And we just gotta, gotta go and cut that on the saw. Piece of cake. So here we are, I got my jig and I've got my first piece, right? And it's gonna go here. Now in this situation, since I don't have a ceiling, it's hard to tell exactly where it lands. So I, that's why I have the jig, okay? That's obviously not the right spot. But if I just roll it until I can have both pieces in that corner and I've got really good contact here. There we go. I am liking that. Okay. Lose the jig. One nail right through here into the wood. Before we get too crazy, let's get the outside corner perfect. Now, I'm just gonna use the actual corner. No need to use the jig because I'm already here, right? Let's get my thumb here. All right. Boom. There we go. Now, well, good luck. And that's it. And now I can just nail on this piece. Now as a DIYer, I'm gonna encourage you when you're doing a crown molding project, put more faith in your caulking than you do in your carpentry. <laughs> Houses are notoriously right, completely not any good when it comes to square, when it comes to level, when it comes to plumb. Builders are not taking their time. The drywall people are using machines, they're in a hurry. The last person to get on the job is the carpenter who has to be specific 
It's just not common sense. So trust your cocking. Trust the fact that people are standing, you know, six, eight feet away. You have two choices in, in construction at this level. One is to scribe all your corners, and there are lots of carpenters, and, and they spend hours and hours and hours doing a carpentry job. Or the average homeowner can just learn how to use their caulking gun and fix up all other mistakes. It's as easy as this. And then you paint. And you don't let the little things bother you. Because this is just as perfect as anything that they're going to give you in new home construction. And at the end of the day, your job as a homeowner is to increase the value of your home. And as long as you do work that's as good as a, a new home construction, you're going to obtain that goal, okay? You don't have to all be master carpenters. A little bit of caulking on the joint down here. All right. Now, generally speaking, I'm not a big fan of using caulking and nail holes. You can use a dry dex or you can use 45 minute compound and mix up a drywall powder and you can use that to fill all your nail holes. When all of your caulking and putty work is done, you need about two hours for it to dry. So if you're doing a whole room and you do the caulking and putty as you work your way around, you might be surprised to find that it takes about two hours. <laughs> so then you can take out your paintbrush right away and start painting all your trim. This is just primed. It probably needs two coats of a finished trim, all right? But the next step is really simple because now you get to put your lights on top. This is a 12 foot LED rope light. If you haven't seen this kind of thing before, um, it's pretty cool. It just plugs into the wall. One of the things you can do with this kind of assembly with your crown molding, and here's the cheat. If you have a light switch, you can actually take the power from the light switch and bring it up here behind the molding in the wall and add a plug. And you just plug this right in, okay? So then you can add an extra switch to turn on just this. That's, that's a pretty in-depth video, but to get the idea. It has an end and this can be continued on in sequence. So you can grab enough to do the whole perimeter of the room and you just tuck it up in behind your molding. Well, I was completely wrong. This is a level three out of 10 in the degree of difficulty. Uh, it does require a certain number of tools, but the skill set is pretty minimal. I'm sure you can be able to do this at home. All right, listen, if you have questions about your project or you need help, consider joining our membership program. All right, we're here to help. We've got an awesome forum for you. You can send in pictures and we can get in a bit of conversation so that if you're stuck, you can get some help to get out of a rut. Make sure you check this out. This is a painting video that'll help you to take this to finish and get great clean lines and an awesome result. Cheers.